It's Maddie Fresh on the track of estate. And I'm bringing to you live my boys Alec and Nate, Tequila Ty, Jay Nelly, and Dylan in the building. So kick it back, pour the drink. We chillin' because I'm boozing and bettin' and ballin' like I'm two six in the blue kicks. Watch me move quick. Yeah, it's the blueprint. So who's getting involved? Welcome into the show. This is Booze Bets and Ball, baby. Welcome back to Booze Bets and Ball, which should be our most anticipated episode of the season. Uh, or or. Yeah, most anticipated episode of the season to date uh, because we got the Penn State-Michigan game this Saturday, and we don't have a game to recap because Penn State was on bye, so all of our attention is on this one, and uh, it's a a big one to put the attention on, to say the least. The biggest one so far by by far, right? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be – it's going to be exciting. Noon kick, 11 a.m. Central, so I don't know. It'll come fast. It'll come and go quickly this weekend. Yeah, another uh, another big noon game for Michigan. I think they've had like all of their Big Ten games have been on big noon so far this year. I'm pretty sure. I think it's three so, or four in a row now. Yeah. yeah so that uh, I'm sure they're sick of it. Penn State played not played at noon uh, the past what, two weeks. No, they played at noon against Central Michigan, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yeah, yeah, but uh, not Northwestern. So, and then the bye week. So Penn State getting ready for uh, the noon again, but it'll be. Michigan's in the uh, the central time zone, right? So that'd be eleven. No, east, no eastern. it's still in the east. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and it's in the east, and it's like the furthest in the east you can get. So in the summertime, okay. it stays light to like eleven o'clock at night. It's pretty cool. Gotcha. In Interesting. Okay. There you go. We learn some geography every day, <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. So we got we got a lot to get into in this one. Ten versus five, both undefeated. Michigan six and zero coming off a thirty-one to ten win over Indiana. As I mentioned, Penn State did not play last week. Uh, Michigan coming off the Big Ten championship, the playoff uh, appearance. They, there was a lot of hype around them. You know, I said I thought the offense was way ahead of their defense this year, this mm-hmm. year just because they brought a lot back offensively. They did not bring a lot back defensively. So far, the defense has looked maybe as good as last year at times. But, I think, you know, they haven't you – know, that whole strength of schedule thing we'll get into. We're not going to look at it in terms of what they should be ranked or anything, but in terms of maybe their defensive numbers could be a little misleading. Does, you know, who they've played play into that at all? To an extent, right? So they are third in the Big Ten right now in, in like, total defense, mm-hmm. um, allowing three point – boom's in the way – three point – Eight yards per carry, 3.9 yards or per play, which is really good. That's second in the Big Ten behind Illinois on, I guess, Iowa, too. So they're third. Like, they're, yeah, their defense is good. But I don't know. We're going to talk about the game, I guess, in more detail. But I was thinking about it today. Like, what do they do better this year than they did last year? And Penn State had them beat last year until Mm -hmm. one one terrible play, right? Like, um, we got crushed. Penn State got crushed in the pass rush last year with Aiden Hutchinson and – um, the other guy, I forget. Um, Good job, but, yeah. yeah, thank, thank you. Yep. Um, they Penn State should hold their own. They're a hell of a lot better this year. The running backs are better this year, and like you said, Michigan should be a little worse. I think defensively. Yeah, the one thing I've noticed about their defense is I think they've kind of dialed up the blitzes more because they can't trust those two DNs to get home as often yeah. as they could last year because obviously the talent, the talent gap does go down after the what the second third pick in the draft and then another guy who probably would have been our first round pick if he didn't get hurt doing a a tryout combine thing (laughs) so i mean you know they're replacing two pretty much first round pick defensive ends which isn't easy so i noticed they're bringing a lot more linebackers and stuff this year and last week against indiana they had seven sacks and indiana dropped back 49 times i think and i think they're honestly pressured on half of half of them i think indiana had like or michigan had like 25 pressures or something crazy like that so you know, that's something Penn State can't get let happen because we know how Clifford can get when the pressure starts to come. And I mean, we saw it. He took a beating yeah. against them last year, and they just cannot have a repeat of that if they want to win this game. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Indiana dropped back 49 times, but they had 19 rushing yards. So I don't know how many rushing attempts they had, um, but they had like by by force, they kind of had to try to throw the yeah. ball, right? Um, 
And Maryland, so the one kind of really decent defense that Michigan would have played, ran for a mm-hmm. 128 and passed for 269, um, 5.44 yards per play, which is somehow Iowa averaged over five yards a play too, but only generated 281 <laughs> yards of offense. So, um, and Iowa kind of, they, you know, if Spencer Petrus was, I don't know, like uh, Christian Bayou, they win that game, I think. So, okay. like, I get the haven't, they haven't played anybody. Um, but Penn State really hasn't played anybody either, so that only goes yeah. so far. But I do think that um, I do think the matchup is good. I think that this should be better than last year, and I think Penn State's going to win. So. Okay, so we got that out of yeah. the way early. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. <laughs> I don't have a. I didn't say a score. But, but. <laughs> okay, that's that's fair. Uh, yeah, you know, watching those three Big Ten games that Michigan's played already, they've played, I would guess, say middle of the pack Big Ten teams put it mildly i guess you know they didn't play penn state ohio state or minnesota but they also you know they didn't play Rutgers and northwestern so they played more middle of the pack teams and one thing i kind of took away from watching those games and then you know checking the box scores watching the highlights after because it's hard to watch these games when if penn state's on or you're at the penn state game but going back and looking is They've kind of gotten off to slow starts, and then their talent has yeah. kind of taken over in the second half. Like, uh, Maryland game was 17-13 at half. Iowa was 13 nothing at half, which, you know, isn't a bad score. Um, and then Indiana was 10-10. So a lot of the damage they've done to these teams, and I mean, we're only going to look at these three games, what they did in those first yeah. three games against practically, you know, high school teams we're not going to look yeah. at. But, you know, it, it does look like they've kind of gotten off the slow starts and then Quorum kind of takes over in the second half when the defense gets tired. Yeah, and that, that is absolutely what happened last week. I mean, you know, Indiana had to feel good going into the half 10-10, right, and mm-hmm. um, blocked the field goal, but then had a field goal block too. Yeah. They could have been leading that game. And, yeah, in the second half it was like as as uh, the guys on podcast ain't played no – or no, uh, no, the other one. Uh, it was a crock potting in the second half, right? Is those, the, right? I mean, it's just like yeah. a slow burn, and Quorum kind of killed them and wore them down. So, um, but where is? Let me see. In my ratings, where's? Um, let me see where <clears throat> where Maryland is, just to compare. So Penn State's the thirty first best defense right now, or offense right now that I have. Uh, Maryland is slightly better. So um, I have them at twenty uh, fourth. So like. I don't know. Like those are comparable teams and Maryland, like Maryland's defense is bad though. So yeah. again, like I, I think that um, Coram will not run the ball as well as it did last week against Indiana. Indiana is about the worst defense in the big 10. Um, give or take. And so again, I, I think the matchup is good. And I think, I think Penn state, man, like they, this is, um, we'll talk about the quarterbacks later, but Sean Clifford, you know, for as much as people want to rag on him, like always shows up in the big games and does not make huge mistakes in big games. And I think that's very important this week. Yeah, I was going to bring that up when you brought up the Maryland game. Maryland made mistakes that more or less, like they, they fumbled the opening kickoff and yeah. Michigan scored one or two plays later. So, you know, that's a that's a big thing that you can't have happen. And then I think they threw another, in, to a, Leah threw another interception when they were driving. They were on like the Michigan 45 or something, and it was first down, I think, like, and he threw a pick. So, you know, you, that's the thing Penn State has to do here. You can't have those kind of mistakes. And so far, Penn State hasn't. They've turned the ball yeah. over six times this year, which sounds like a lot. But when you look at the fact that five of them came in that Hurricane Ian game against yeah. Northwestern, you know, you kind of – take it with a grain of salt a little more. Don't, don't think they're a turnover prone team as much, especially because, you know, that happening, I think the week before the bye week where they, the running backs fumble four times, it was made an emphasis then when you had two weeks of practice to make sure it doesn't happen again. So for the, the timing of them to have that quote unquote clunker game, it was a good time to happen then because now they, they got some extra time to work on ball security, you know, playing with wet balls and that kind of stuff. So I think that'll help them too because they cannot do what Maryland did. Nope, no, they can't, and they won't. Right, that that seems to be a, a huge outlier. And like you said, I mean, up until <clears throat> for the first four games of the year, they had, I believe, zero fumbles. I know, mm-hmm. obviously, zero fumbles lost, but I think zero fumbles or one fumble. Kevon Lee fumbled once before that. Yeah, um, and if you count the the Clifford getting rocked by the Auburn dude. Yeah. Yes. Thank you yeah. too. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, ball security and against mm-hmm. Northwestern was obviously a different situation. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, this is a stupid game to play, but like Michigan could have, you know, could be four and two right now if things broke a little differently against Maryland and Iowa. So like, they are not, un, they're not unbeatable. I, I know the Michigan fans want to believe that Penn state is like so inferior to them and uh, being on Twitter just makes me mad. Um, but you know, they only beat Maryland, whatever, 34, 27. And like you said, there's a couple of critical plays. I mean, they, they've got the ball basically <laughs> like to start both halves, which is not good yeah. for if you're Maryland. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm laughing because Jay Nelly is watching and in the private chat, he said, sus after I said playing with wet balls, I, I know how that sounds. Yeah. I, that's not what I meant. Okay. Jesus. I, 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 I would not have. <laughs> Uh, he picked up on it. I I knew he was gonna too. But I did but, too. Um, but I'm on the sh- I'm talking right now. Well, so I don't yeah, to, like I know, but I, I meant it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> the longer you talk about it, the worse it I is, know. bro. Like, all right, so. all right, all right. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Anyway, well, Penn State is facing not the quarterback they faced last year. They played Michigan because uh, Cade McNamara got lost the job and then got hurt is I think what happened there at Michigan. Uh, so JJ McCarthy is fully in command of this offense right now. And I mean, he's been, I don't want to say he's looked like, he hasn't looked like CJ Stroud in terms of like taking over games, but he's been like really efficient with what he's yeah. done. I feel like they roll him out of the pocket. He gets first downs with his legs. He, you know, the, the uh, completion percentage is high. It, it's not like he's whizzing the ball 50 yards downfield every play, but that he's doing what he needs to. And especially with how good the run game is, he doesn't have to be over the top. And, you know, I, I'm interested to see how Penn state defends this. Cause we know how Penn state secondary is, but it looks like there's a weak spot in this secondary and it's those slants five to eight yards in the middle of the field that has been kind of giving them trouble so far this year. Uh, you know what, that, that comment was discussed on Twitter and the hardcore Penn state podcast guy said, it's only been a couple of times. Like he, he pointed out two exact situations where that happened, one against Purdue. And then um, I forget what the second one was, but like, and it seemed like either it was a really young guy playing or a gross miscommunication. So I don't know, maybe that's a little bit overblown, um, but like you're saying, he's McCarthy has been super efficient. Um, <clears throat> so throws uh, zero to nine yards past the line of scrimmage, 90% completion. <clears throat> Uh, so he is 57 out of 63, uh, 10 to 19 yards, 75%, 18 out of 24. So like it really drops down as percent of targets longer and longer, obviously drop down. Um, but yeah, like in that zero to 20 range, he's basically 85% or something. So really good there. I mean, you would, you would kill for that if you were most teams. Uh, and then he's at about 10 yards at attempt <clears throat> that way too, which is also pretty fantastic. So um we'll see i i don't know like who are their weapons now they have david bell right but they don't he's kind of ronnie bell ronnie bell thank you ronnie bell yeah it's been a long day i apologize (laughs) Uh, ronnie bell uh who has some revenge on his mind against penn state right from the way um they have johnson and roman wilson i think those three start um so i don't know they're not they're not the same guys that they've had in years past either so Joey Porter yeah. Jr. goes on Ronnie Bell, and you know, and mm-hmm. as long as he's not in the slot, but the corners are going to cover. They're going to cover well. Yeah, I think what I would say with the the Michigan receivers is they're kind of in a way like Penn State, where it doesn't look like they have a dominant number one, but there's a yeah. lot of guys there that could make a play. You know, it's hard to de- it's kind of harder to defend those teams honestly when you don't exactly know who to game plan for right away because it could be. This guy could go six for a hundred and a touchdown this game and then have one catch for 10 yards yeah. the next game. You know, mm-hmm. it's, I think that's kind of how the Penn state receiving group works. And to an extent, I think Michigan as well. Um, I'm just looking at one thing. The one thing that's good, I think for, for Penn state is that they don't like the running back isn't going to catch a lot of balls. So Blake Corm only has four catches. Uh, Donovan Edwards has seven. So like, you don't worry so much about putting a, a middle linebacker uh, trying mm-hmm. to, you know, trying to cover it fast. Like they're going to get against Ohio state, right? That's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're like, you're right though. I mean, the 30 receptions for Ronnie bell, um, tight end Luke Schumacher, Schumacher has 23. He's second. And then it's 12, 12, five. So it really, really falls off pretty quick there. Yeah. It, it does look a lot like 
Penn State's box score for the receivers. So kind of, you know, these teams are pretty equally matched, honestly. If you saw on uh, 247, Tyler Calvaruso put out those, he does every week, the like the recruiting ranking comparisons between the mm-hmm. two teams. And Michigan and Penn State were pretty even. I think pretty much the only big difference was the fact that McCarthy was a five-star recruiter as a quarterback. Like that was only the only like significant difference between the two teams really was that. So this is, you know, this is a pretty equally matched team game for these two teams so it's, it's definitely interesting to see because they've played some last year i thought it was the first time maybe they played a game that looked yeah. equally ma- equally matched yeah. like i felt like you know the past five or six years we kind of knew who was going to win by the end of the first quarter now mm-hmm. i know in 2019 like they came back a little, bit, but it was, a little bit it was like 21 nothing like right away and you like you know at that point you just kind of feel like it's over so you know this is kind of getting back to that where these two teams look equally matched and we're gonna see what happens. You're you're right though. Like they're they're number fourteen and fifteen in the talent composite um, yeah. on twenty four seven, which is pretty wild. So they both have three five stars. Michigan has forty one fours. We have thirty nine fours, uh, and then the threes are a little bit different. But like, um, wow, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, they are they are pretty close teams. So I wanted to bring up uh, what you got to show us this week, and we'll talk about that for the a little bit. All right. So this this goes into the preview that I do on Twitter, and this uh, this got so much like uh, Michigan hasn't played anybody hate, but I I, I disagree with that. Like I'll, I'll show the next couple of pages here why that's wrong. But basically, <laughs> um, or that's right, but it's lacking context. So Michigan right. is a little bit better in pretty much everything, right? So points per possession allowed though on defense. So the kind of fifth one, second one from the right, like here, Penn state is giving up a couple more points per 10 possessions, but that's pretty close. Um, Penn state's giving up a few more yards per drive. But again, like we talked mm-hmm. about in weeks previous, like when you have a punter like Barney, Barney Moore and you are a turnover machine, you don't really bother with that too much. And then, you know, the, on the offensive side of the ball, Penn State is not as effective as Michigan has been. But again, like you can probably chalk up the, the game last week um, against Northwestern two or two weeks ago to the rain. Uh, Michigan has played some inferior talent on defense. So I don't know. It looks pretty, it, it looks closer than, than what this might show. Go um, two more down. Oh, sorry, Mr. I, I thought I put that one. Uh, go back up one. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, right here. So, all right. So here's the the opponent comparison. So on the left are the offensive efficiencies for Michigan's opponents, Penn State's components, opponents, and then everybody else. And then on the right are the defensive efficiencies. Uh, here, lower is better for everybody else, Michigan and Penn State. And what you see in both of these, like Maryland is the best offense that either team has played, and it's not close. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Purdue and that uh, blue triangle on Penn State is Ohio, actually, I did not waste my time to download the Ohio logo because I'll never use it. Again. <laughs> so, um, so Penn State's played slightly better offenses, with the exception of um, with the exception of Michigan and Penn State. Like we talked about, is slightly worse uh, offense than Maryland, but they're still you know far and away better than any other team that uh, Michigan has played. And then on the right, you know, at an average um, defense. Um, Defensive opponent is going to be a 29. Again, lower is better. So Penn State has played slightly worse defenses than than Michigan has, but they're all basically there. And Iowa is the huge standout, um, being you know fourth or fifth in the nation, something like that. So Penn State right. hasn't played a really strong uh, defense yet. Purdue's the best. Northwestern's pretty good. So you know, and both you know the Purdue game on the road is actually becoming a better win over time. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit now that they uh, they beat Maryland in that uh, wild game. That the clock. That's okay. Game. They they won, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, they beat Maryland. They beat Minnesota. So I mean, right. Uh, yeah, and, and Syrac- Syracuse looks like a good team too. So them losing to them really yeah. isn't that bad. Yeah, either. on like a wild last second, you know, nonsense type thing. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Uh, go one more here, please. Let's see next. Or go just go uh, down to the quarterback thing. We'll we'll skip this. People can look at this oh. later. Um, right here. So, you know, just to compare, the one thing I think here in J.J. McCarthy, I, I flipped him so it looks that way. It's not, he's not wearing it backwards, number nine. Um, <laughs> Clifford starting 38 games, having the experience and being in some hostile environments like Iowa in 2019, um, like Ohio State last year, like Auburn this year, like Purdue this year, um, the whiteout game, uh, Minnesota 2019. 
With the exception of Minnesota, he has not done a bad job. And even that we talked about a couple weeks ago or last week, you know, three interceptions and a couple of them weren't his fault. Right. So right. while statistically McCarthy looks considerably better across the board, I think that needs to be taken with a grain of salt because he's only started four games uh, mm-hmm. against you know those teams that we mentioned before. And Clifford is well seasoned. I think he's going to do a good job this week. I don't think, you know, he might throw one pick, uh, but I bet he throws at least – at least one more touchdown or two, let's say two more touchdowns and he throws interceptions. So if he throws one interception, he throws three t- touchdowns. If he throws zero, okay. he throws two touchdowns. And he will not fumble at all. And he will not be sacked more than twice. So. That, that that's that feels like the big one, just keeping him upright. Uh, you know, he's he's played Michigan twi- or three times, and he's never turned the ball over against them. As wow, far as, I did not as, know that. Is that. As far as I could have found, that's that's what I found, so... And, you know, if you watch, go back and watch the Auburn game again, like pre-snap, he is, he's directing, right? Everybody, he's giving everybody their assignments. He's fully engaged. He's doing all the things. And I think he t- tends to do that, I think, in the bigger games. And maybe he gets a little bit lax, like against Central mm-hmm. Michigan and, and stuff. So you, you see dialed in Clifford. I don't care what people say. He's the guy you want right now because it's, even if it's 12 o'clock uh, in a all yellow stadium uh it's still going to be a hundred and whatever thousand people hundred and ten thousand people so uh you don't want to start your freshman five star there sorry yeah now this is not the week to do that um i know if penn state loses this game that is all that will be talked about for a week leading up to minnesota but we will hopefully not have to talk about that and if we do save it for next week so uh you know we're not even gonna get into that this week but i you know i saw some people on twitter like they should they should have a package for Aller, and I was like, "What do you, like? What do you mean?" And I'm like, "He doesn't really, he doesn't run." I'm like, "That's kind of what you do, like, like Auburn was like, doing like th- You're gonna throw bombs with that? You're just gonna bring him in to throw it seven? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, that's the most obvious thing on the planet. If you're bringing him in to throw the ball 40, 50 yards downfield, like they're they're gonna know what's gonna happen. So that that's not happening. I don't think. Um, I don't know. Maybe they do do it two quarter they bring back that stupid line position and like they do like set, line them up at receiver and throw a bubble screen to him and then he flings it 50 yards downfield i don't know maybe but you do that do that with yeah. tyler warren like let tyler warren throw the ball <laughs> yeah, like that, I, right? that, yeah that's another thing i don't know if he's hurt or not because he did not play yeah, yeah they so. didn't say if he was out there today either that no uh, counter lambert smith back which is good yeah yeah um i don't know that look drew aller is probably going to be top two or three quarterback ever at Penn state when it's all said or done, if he stays right. But um, just, <laughs> you got to win the damn game this week. And uh, that's not how you do it. And bring him in just to chuck it deep is also not how you do it. Yeah, no, I, I really don't expect that to happen, but you know, on having Lambert Smith back, like we talked about with the Michigan pass rush, Lambert Smith is the guy yeah. they like to throw those like bubble screens to and stuff when they get the ball out quick. So just having him back to be able to do that, to kind of take some of the pressure off is huge if he's back. That, that in, is... in Indiana in the first half was crushing Michigan with kind of bubble wide receiver screens. I mean, they would just line up on one side, of the, line them up on, oh my, line them up on the left and throw it to the screen, get eight yards, then switch it to the right. Um, yeah. Interesting I, I, you're just yeah, yeah 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 we're, we're, we're being distracted by what uh the two of them are chirping a lot right now but <laughs> yeah so th- this game i do feel comes down to pretty much penn state being able to stop quorum you know I, i've gone back and forth on quorum is i don't you know he's not like a christian mccaffrey where he catches a hundred balls and he returns kicks and he's, and he's not like a Saquon where he's hurdling guys and stuff. He's just kind of like a steady back that uses the fact that his offensive line is pretty damn good to his advantage to, he has great vision is pretty much what I'm getting to. He is above average in vision. He's probably above average in speed, but outside of that, I don't, you know, he's five, eight, I think. Yep. So five, eight, two, he's not, yeah, he's not the most physical back they're going to face. You know, that was probably Bigsby, but you know, they, they have a chance then to shut him down if they can clog up the line and, you know, reduce the size of the holes he gets to run through because he, he doesn't take me as much of a Saquon who's going to take an inside run and bounce no. it outside and go for 50 yards. I think that's true. I mean, last week he had a 50-yard 
not touchdown, but it was like down to the one or two where just, just like you said, he had a very narrow hole, but his vision is so good that he, he found it and busted through and just kind of smoked Indiana. Um, but yeah, he's not, I don't know, this is like, you know, words to, to haunt you on Saturday right. night. I, I like, know. Yeah. Um, he's a really good back. Right. But like you said, I, I think all those things that you mentioned, he's not Saquon. He, he's not tank Bigsby, like tank Bigsby scared me to death because I thought he was going to crush just like wear them down. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't give him the ball enough to do that anyway. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Said the, we've been on the on the call for 25 minutes and I have, like my confidence has gone from a six to a nine. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Because mine's been at like a steady five. I, you know, I, I don't know. My opinion on this game honestly hasn't changed since maybe the beginning of the year. I, I think the one thing that has given me a little more confidence is the fact that Penn State looks like they can actually run the ball, which if mm -hmm. they could have done that last year against Michigan, they probably win that game because they're not just sitting back and teeing off on Clifford 10 times like they did. So, you know, I, I think that's a huge thing for them to just not really have to deal with that anymore where there's so much pressure on Clifford to be able to move and get out of the way of these guys where the defense just isn't sitting back there and waiting for him to, you know, step back and throw the ball and yeah. they could actually run now. Yeah. Uh, left tackle this year is far better than left tackle last year too. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't think uh, Oli Wolf Fashano is going to be telling Clifford to throw the ball after he gets absolutely smoked by the defense <laughs> fan. I, I hope not. Anyway, I, you know, for everyone's sake, I really hope we don't have a repeat of that. Um, I, I don't think we will, but you know, you never no. know. I, I don't think so though. He, he's been a gem for them. And yes. you know, the offensive line pretty much as a whole has been, has been good. Now this is by far their hardest test. Um, but you know, it's also Michigan's hardest test. And I think we have to kind of look at this both ways. Both of these teams aren't that tested. They've both played a couple road games against what could be sneaky teams like Iowa and Indiana, Penn State played Purdue and Auburn. So, you know, everything's been equal and, uh, as mad yeah, as I am, we'll like at the Michigan fans for saying, like you know, Penn State's inferior. I'm I'm equally as mad at the Penn State fans who tell me that, um, you know, Michigan hasn't played anybody too. So I, I think yeah, you're right. I, like, it, it, lucky, you know, you, equal is about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that excuse just isn't. You know, I think the last time we tried to use the they didn't play anybody excuse, it was Minnesota in 2019, mm -hmm, exactly. and and they came they came out swinging and they looked like the better team. And I, for, since that game, I have never tried to look at past opponents that the other team played in making a decision for this game. You know, like does it skew numbers at times? Yeah. Like does does Michigan playing Iowa or not Iowa, Hawaii and UConn? make their running numbers look better than they probably are. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they're not good and they can't beat you and they're not talented. I, I think yeah. people get that mixed up is that you kind of maybe throw out the numbers, but you don't throw out the team. Yeah. I think that's very good. Um, and yeah, that's where, and like, you know, it's getting into the point of the year where you can start to really, I think, calibrate teams against each other. Um, and like, you know, who they play averages out because like you're always going to, every team is going to play good teams. and They're going to play bad teams. Mm -hmm. Um, and, it's, this is not that far away. And like you said, I mean, you got to, you got to really view it on the whole. I'm um, just looking up one thing, seven divided by 165. So, all right. So last year, Penn state had 34 sacks on like 486 pass attempts, which is getting sacked um, basically 7% of their dropbacks this year. They have seven sacks on um, 165 attempts. So that's getting sacked 4% of their dropbacks. So that's, that's a huge improvement, right? Like half, basically half as many sacks or half a sack rate that they had last year. So um, that that is a demonstration of the offensive line improvement. Now, again, not in the heart of the schedule yet and things like that. So we'll see how it goes. But they look better. They're they're objectively better than they were last year in yeah. every facet of offense. Yeah, I, I think that is the main thing. Look at Penn State's better maybe on both sides of the ball. Michigan is, I think, better on offense, but I think they've taken a step back on defense. Yeah. But, you know, they do get some advantage for this game being home, and that, that's kind of why, you know, I'm leaning towards them by three, maybe three or four, just because I'll, I'll give them home field. You know, I'll give them the fact that they could run the ball pretty well. I, I know Penn State has been tested on the road already. I know Sean Clifford is very tested on the road. But, you know, right now, I just, I don't know. I, I'm get, If this was on a neutral field, I might take Penn State. I definitely take them at home. 
but I, I don't know on the road. I'm just, I'm slightly leaning Michigan right now. Okay. So what's your score prediction then? I, I have it like 27, 24, like somewhere in there. I, I think both teams score more than last year because I think their offenses are ahead of where they were last year for both teams. Just because I think Michigan has a little more of a pass game this year with McCarthy. And I think kind of they could run the ball a lot more and their offensive line is better. I, I don't know. I've just, I think the fact that everyone wants to talk about the unknown with Michigan because they haven't played anyone. Like I'm basing a lot of this off of last year too, in a sense, mm-hmm. but I also see a lot that's back for them. That was good last year. And yeah. I've seen them kind of break away in the second half of these other teams. None of these teams have been nearly as solid as Penn state, but I, I right now I'm just slightly leaning Michigan. Okay. And that, and that's another factor. I think that, uh, Penn State has this year that they did not have when going into Michigan last year too is that the defensive line depth is considerably higher, right? Like you have yeah. everybody. You have five or six defensive tackles you can play. You have four or five defensive ends you can play. By this time last year, PJ Mustafer was hurt, right? Um, mm-hmm. Lisa Isaac wasn't like didn't play the whole year. So I I I would not expect them to get worn down like they would have in years past. So right now the line is seven for Michigan. It came down a half mm-hmm. a point, I guess. The over under is fifty one and a half. So you're right there. You're just under by a half a point, and you've got Penn State um, to cover. I think they cover for sure. Yeah. I got. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go twenty eight to twenty Penn State. Um, okay. So I'm taking the under, but Penn State's gonna win this game. Yeah. All right. Look, I hope they do. I, I really do. I, I think this is one Franklin needs. I think this is one the program needs. So I really hope they do win it. I, I don't know. I'm just basing this off of a lot of stuff. I give Michigan a slight edge, but I think if Penn State plays turnover free ball, they can easily yeah. win this game. It's kind of what it's coming down to, I think. Sean Clifford on the road in big games. I forgot about Wisconsin last year. That's one that I yeah. kind of, right? like he does this. He's going to do this. All right. So. I hope he does. We'll see. All right, so Penn State Michigan isn't the only big game this week. There's five other games between ranked teams. It's a, it's a crazy slate this week, and it pretty much starts off with Penn State playing Michigan at noon. So we're gonna talk about those other games a little bit. So we have to bring in. I think he's ready. We're gonna bring in Jay Nelly, who's hey, looking there. down. There he is. No, yeah, there he is. No, you're good. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna discuss. Um, oop, hang on. I can get these other games in here. There we go. All right. So we got uh, we got your games for this week. Yes, sir. All right. So biggest game of the week, easily Bama, Tennessee, I think. Even better than Penn State, Michigan. I personally think this game will come down to the wire. But if Bryce Young doesn't go, I think Tennessee will easily cover and win. If he goes, it'll be closer. But with the atmosphere at home and how Tennessee's playing, Hendon Hooker is playing as a Heisman candidate right now. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard to stop him. But with Cedric Tillman being out now, mm-hmm. that I saw on Twitter, he's not going to be back. He's going to be back for Kentucky. That will hurt him. And that might change. I don't know if they're cover. I, I mean, so. I don't know. If Bryce Young and Cedric Tillman are out, what do you got? You got Tennessee still. Easy. Tennessee, yeah. Tennessee wins if Bryce Young and Cedric Tillman are both out. Yeah, if Bryce Young so is back. I think he might have another like game-winning drive that he had before the, the season against. Who was that against again? Auburn. Texas? No, I think it was Texas, right? Oh, this year, yeah, Texas, yeah. Yeah, Texas. Yeah, I think he'll have another one of those games because Bama really hasn't been that dominant. Like their wide receivers don't seem like they're that, like how they used to be. Mm-hmm. Last so, week, if um, if A and M can call a fourth and goal play with one second left that gets into the end zone, they might have a chance to beat Alabama last week. Yeah, I mean so. Evan Stewart is poking their defensive backs, and Tennessee's got better players yeah, than A and M. So, Hendon Hooker is, but is you know. I don't know. He, he's an NFL quarterback, and I forget the uh, A&M kid's name, but he he is not. No. No. Uh, but the Alabama pass rush, like you got no line on there. The Alabama pass rush last week was absolutely relentless. That poor that poor A&M quarterback. Uh, yeah, I would I think have they had 14 QB pressures last week against A&M, which is pretty insane. And Will Anderson, 
just crazy, impossible to block him. So that'll be tough. But honestly, one of my favorite games is Oklahoma State versus TCU because TCU went into Kansas. I had Kansas last mm-hmm. week. Went into Kansas. I didn't think they were that good, to be honest, and they just demolished them through the air. They could not stop Quentin Johnson. He had 206 yards and a touchdown. And TCU's quarterback, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he's been playing lights out. I think it's Max Duggan, or Dugan, yep. I think. Yeah, Dugan, yeah. Yeah, he's been he's playing lights out. And then Oklahoma State barely came away with a win against uh, the Raiders at Texas Tech, and they aren't that good of a team. I mean, they always put up a fight. But I think TCU at, at, TCU at home, I think they're going to show the world that, what they're about this year and win and be uh, ranked high top ten. If TCU wins that game, that – I mean – the Big 12 is just going to eat itself because there's no way TCU goes 12 and 0 um, or 13 and 0, right? So like, yeah. Oklahoma State is the only team that's got kind of the pedigree and the history to be able to maybe run the table, and I doubt that they can. So this this really probably starts to set up the Big 12 being eliminated from from the playoff. Yeah, I mean, like what TCU and Kansas at top right now? Like that's yeah. crazy to think about. And Oklahoma State. Yeah, 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 and Oklahoma yeah. State. But like Texas and Oklahoma taking – Texas would have been up there, of course, if uh, yeah. Quinn didn't get hurt. Yeah. But you can't really do anything about that. It happens with football, as we saw last year with Penn State. So. Yeah, when your superstar quarterback goes out, everything happens. Everything goes, so. <laughs> it does. Superstar, but you know what I mean. I know. But, <laughs> He's just <laughs> – <laughs> And then uh, NC State versus Syracuse. NC State coming off a tough loss to Clemson where their yeah. quarterback got hurt. So, I mean, that's tough to see. Their backup quarterback was terrible, like absolutely horrendous. They had nothing going, and Clemson just took over the game, and they won. And I love Syracuse just for one reason, because of Sean Tucker. Yeah, he's good. After mm-hmm. every game, he tweets out how he's <laughs> It's so funny. I love it. It seems like a parody account when he does that. Like, it's like no one is this humble. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, I went for like 320, two touchdowns. Good game. Could have done better. We didn't come out on top, but we're going to get him next week. I'm just like, dude, what? You can't do any more. You're the running back. <laughs> that is so true. I'm picking up the win, I think. It, yeah. It is cool to see Syracuse good again, too, right? So I, yeah. It's been a long time. But then also, I had a fun – I made a nice, like, fun surgical parlay with a different team. So, West Virginia is playing Baylor at home. And I took them plus three and a half. West Virginia is very good at home. They usually cover most of the time. And I'm my sister's from West Virginia, so I always ride with West Virginia. We go, she went there. And then Illinois versus Minnesota. Illinois at home is getting plus six and a half, which is nuts to me. Like, I yeah. want Minnesota to win because, like, we play them next week, and if we beat Michigan, which we are, just so that's known now. All right. We need Minnesota to beat them. They'd be another, if they beat a top 25 team, they'll probably be ranked again or be close to ranked again because they already got votes last week. So that mm-hmm. can only help us. So they're going to get beat to hell, though. That, like, they're going to be absolutely bruised and battered when they come to Penn State next week because the Illinois defense is tough. I know. It's crazy. I can't believe Illinois is like that this year. Yeah, they, uh, they're a physical team, but I, you know, I think Penn State will be a little bruised too from a battle with Michigan. But Yeah, but, sure. But you'd like yeah. it. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the thing with Minnesota is, you know, they didn't have Mo Ibrahim last – Ibrahim, yeah. I guess is how it's pronounced, last week. You know, I wouldn't even have dropped them out of the top 25 just because of the fact that he is their entire team. And you know, they lost by 10 to a Purdue team. That's not even that bad. So, to me, that was, you know, I, I still consider them a top 25 team for sure. Yeah. And then another crazy – I mean, Kansas quarterback apparently was supposed to have, like, a shoulder out season. Like, yeah. Out for the, then he tweets that he's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and Kansas good. getting plus nine at Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, yeah, it's Oklahoma, but they're not playing good. And Kansas has shown that they can put up a fight and they can put mm-hmm. up points. And the backup quarterback came in, threw three dots to keep the game, keep it in like reach to come back. He was playing out lights out. He had like a terrible interception though that like basically cost him the game. But other than mm-hmm, that, that. he's playing really well. 
So I think plus nine to Kansas. Then, of course, TCU money line, like I said before. Okay. And then, but something, I mean, I don't know, Vegas with this USC and Utah game. Utah is favored. And I just hmm. don't know why. I mean, I guess it's at Utah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, home field advantage, but they got steamrolled by UCLA. Like, they were just yeah. dominating. UCLA, I've never seen UCLA like that in a while, and they were dominating them on the O-line and D-line. So that was cur- – I mean, I think USC goes in there. Caleb Williams, Jordan Addison, Mario Williams, Travis Dye, their defense has one- shown that they can win games with their offense not playing the best. I think they go in and steam well, personally, and cover. Yeah, I can well, see that. They're – Three and a half, so it gets not covered. Yeah. But, I mean, take the points right. for sure. Okay. And then uh, UNC minus seven versus Duke. I love Drake May. He's a Heisman candidate too. He's going off. And Duke, I don't really like Duke. So I want UNC. Yeah, they to suck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I see it. All right. So we, we got all that in, which is good. That's a good will, job, Nelly. Yeah, we will right. we'll look back at these next week. Um so you have you have Penn State winning though, right? Yeah, I mean Penn State, I mean I had Penn State before this year. I said 12 and 0, 11 and 1, 12 and 0. I'm sticking with that prediction. Okay. And I think, I mean, yeah, Michigan, like everybody said, they played bad teams, of course. But we, the difference was they played bad, bad teams. They dominated those games. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like we played Central Michigan. We put 133 to 14 or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's not a good game. That's not impressive at all. They beat Hawaii like 60 0. Like, it's a different story. Like, they're actually putting up points. So like, mm-hmm. I can't really take that against them when we're not playing. Like we beat Ohio like forty to seven. Like that's like whatever. Okay. So I'm not putting that against them. But I mean Clifford, I trust Clifford for the oddest reason. I know he's gonna go in there. Mitchell Tinsley, Lambert's back, Singleton. Their D line's not as dominant. We actually have an O line for once. Hopefully, knock on wood, this right. year. So I mean I think we'll go in there and win. Thirty four. 27 touchdown, mm-hmm. I think. I think we'll have right. a couple takeaways because JJ McCarthy has a face of defense like ours. Our secondary is nuts. I think there's yeah, no way. Yeah, but, you know, that that is a good point that I think we failed to bring up earlier. Is this is JJ McCarthy's biggest start by far in his career? Yeah. This is this is not Sean Clifford's biggest start in his career. You know, at least you would think so. He's played in a lot of other big games. At least <laughs> He, at least he's played another big game, so that, you know it just seems like another day at the office for him. So I am interested to see how McCarthy responds, starting in his first like real big game. Yep. I mean, he's been pretty good. I'm not gonna he lie, he has he's been. been. Pretty good. But I he mean, been. it's been relying off of Blake Corum though. That's what I want to see. If we can stop Blake Corum, what's he gonna do? Because they gotta pass the ball. They're gonna have yeah. to rely on JJ, and then our secondary can feed off of that. So, I mean, we can stop that. We can be dominant in the trenches. We can win that game. Go in there and come out with a W. Yeah, I agree. All right. You might you might have swayed me back the other way, Nelly. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right. All right. Well, we got to move on because we have our other guests to get to. But, you know, I appreciate you coming on, giving us the insights. Um, I, I will – I'll run the parlay with you this week. I will go back oh. because I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm not listening to everything with the Phillies game on in the background. But <laughs> – I will go back, listen to everything, and every single bet that you took, I will put into a parlay this weekend, and I will run it with you. I'll run it with you this weekend. All right. Make sure you make sh- you see if all the players who are out are in or out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till like Saturday at 11:30. But <laughs> yeah, probably smart. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Always good talking to you, Nelly. Peace out. See ya. No, oh, what a guy. <laughs> Great to have him. Um, That's good. All right. Yeah. So we have our. Last thing to get to, as this is getting long, but I figured it would. Um, we have our drink of the week with Tyler. Hey, Tyler. What's up, Tyler? How you guys doing? Good. Doing, doing good. Well, your audio is always so good. For... <laughs> I, I think I think it's just the comparison of Nelly's is. <laughs> Fair enough. Nelly's yeah. kind of it. So. <laughs> Poor kid. Aw. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about what we got this week for us. All right, so I wanted to go with a little uh, gritty drink, you know, trying to get All the right. juice flowing. And uh, it's going to be a nice blue-collar game, ground and pound up there in Ann Arbor. So no better way to do that than a whiskey sour. But since I'm tequila tie, I go with the tequila sour. 
And uh, so it's kind of a straightforward drink. You got the tequila, uh, two ounces tequila, two ounces sour mix, which you can either get from store or if you want to find a homemade recipe, go for it. I don't have the effort for that. So I, I put won't. one in the bottom right there. It's right there in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I, there's one down there. I'm just saying I won't be doing that. Okay. I'll be store bought. Um, <laughs> and throw in an ounce of the blue KR Sal just for this little Penn State flavor. And typically, because it's like the whole sour and everything and comes out as a yellowish color, I would go with a um, lemon for the garnish. But, you know, can't do a nice little blue and yellow drink play in Michigan. So go with right. the lime. Still tastes the same. Give you the nice little mix. But we'll grow some hair in your chest for this weekend because it's going to be a rough one, boys. We're going to go up there. We're going to kick some ass. But that, that eyes are going to happen. All right. Those are not tequila sours, by the way. Those are um, blue cocktails with lime is what I searched for that. So, um. <laughs> Exactly what it's going to look like when I'm drinking them on Saturday morning. <laughs> I think they'll be, those glasses will be a lot emptier on Saturday morning when you're drinking them. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I mean, it's a great way to wake up, just go with the whole uh, ground and pound game that's going to be happening in Ann Arbor. So. Grown man's yeah, drink. All right. I like it. Good. good. Yeah, good. Yeah, I don't know. That's good. It looks awesome. good. I don't know. Good, good. I mean, I don't know. Good what, theme what's your, for the week. What's your score prediction, Tyler? My score prediction? Oof. I'm going to go 31-23 Penn State. Oof, that's big time. Good, good for you. Yeah. Okay. That's the same, same difference as I have. You just have <laughs> scoring one more field goal. Yeah. I mean, look, if, if we go into the big house and score a 31, there's going to be a lot of optimism around this team going forward. And, uh, you know, no one wants to win more than me because that whiteout Ooh. weekend after would just be insane. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm really hoping for it. It would be great. Uh, Tyler and I are going to try to do some videos for the whiteout weekend if everything goes well. So we'll see. But, some nice little uh, vlogging live stream. Yeah, right? if we, if we can, yeah, we're gonna try. But all right, all right. Let me get. Where was the the back. Maryland game? Was at Michigan? Like Michigan? Have they played an away game yet? No. Uh, no. Michigan played at Indiana and at Iowa. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I don't think they played at Iowa, did they? No, I, I think they, they did. did. It was like in the middle of the day. Like five straight home games. Uh, was that home? I, for some reason, I, I feel like that game was Indiana was away. Okay, Iowa was away too. Tyler yeah, it was away. Alex, right? yeah. So. But like, I don't know, man. Maryland, I don't know. Every game's different. Every week's different. But Maryland didn't go in there and get their like get killed at the big house. Yeah, like I kind We're of not go in there and get killed at the big house, huh? No, I, I don't expect this game to be a blowout either way. Honestly, yeah, I think it's Ohio State that hasn't played an away game yet. Silly me. Oh uh, yeah, same thing. Sorry, I keep. Going. <laughs> so they're gonna win. All right, I like that. Right, I think we match up really well. Yep, I agree. Clifford plays well, we win. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, it is. Look, he's played well against Michigan, too, kind of all these years. And, you know, in 2020, they ran the ball on Michigan, actually, with Kayvon Lee. They didn't really run the ball in 2019 that much. That was all, like, Clifford to Hamler, like, five times. Yeah. Um, and last year, obviously, they couldn't run. So I'm interested to see how Michigan handles Penn State being able to run the ball again. So that that's kind of the added element here for me. I you think would like to have KJ Hamler right now, though. Like, <laughs> you don't really have a game breaker like him. Either. Well, you know, and this is what we've t discussed last week too. The whole is Penn State going to go down the field this week because they haven't been. Is Clifford going to run this week because he hasn't been? And yeah. you know, those are the two things where if they do with some success, they easily could win this game. Yeah. And that was the thing against Northwestern, too. He barely tried to run. I don't think he had more than two intentional carries the whole game. Right? I think it was two. Yeah, I think it was exactly yeah. two. So, I don't know. Maybe they're telling him not to do that in the big game, like in the kind of games they should win. Because in Auburn, the first play of the game, he scrambles and, you know, <laughs> yeah, almost, almost ends up dead. So, yeah. Um, but, but they said it well earlier, though. I mean, Clifford shows up for these type of games. We love him or hate him, but he shows up there. He's got some guts and he got some courage and he makes some plays. So as long as he doesn't have any of those Clifford like oh shit moments, I think we'll be okay. If he has one, so can, like he had one against Purdue, right? But then he dialed it yeah. back in, and yeah, you know. So I, I focused. I I really think somehow like he is more focused in these games, and he 
he's more just engaged with what's going on and that is a huge difference for him so, yeah for sure yeah all right well you guys you guys have talked me back the other way i uh i don't know i wanted i i want to believe and i you know i do believe but that just I don't know. I think you're a Michigan a spy. You're going to. Oh, yeah. dude, we're not doing that again. Oh, <laughs> had enough of that on Twitter this week. With, oh, my God. That was a whole thing. That 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 kept my month. Was that Monday? Was that yesterday? I think, I think it was Monday. Yeah. It kept my whole day interesting. Like, I, I don't know. It's just going on Twitter, listening to people's drama about what uh, accounts, <laughs> what accounts fans or what teams accounts root for or whatever. And I was like, all right, well, this is this will be fun for the day. But like, all right. It got pretty sad pretty quick, too. <laughs> no, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Not. It was, oh, God. All right, so the three, of that, the three of them are on Penn State. I am slightly leaning Michigan, and I hope I get roasted for it because I need to be roasted for picking Penn State to lose for once because I feel like I only get roasted when I pick them to win. Um, and, you know, that's the problem, too. My, my mentions are always filled with um, if I pick them to win – it's like every week it's like, oh, so you expect them to go 12 and 0 and make the playoff. And then if I expect them to lose, it's you're a bad fan or whatever. And it's like, I, you can't win. So I, <laughs> I'm probably going to pick them to lose against Ohio State, right? Like, well, yeah, you, I, I think you I, have to have some realism in this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a game, though, I think they, they easily could win if they play turnover free ball. I'm just yeah. worried about one or two bad plays that could turn the whole game sideways. It's pretty much yeah. where I'm at. That's that's football yeah. any week yeah. though. One or yeah. two bad ones can ruin the whole game. So having five yeah. turnovers the last game was good though, because turnovers do kind of even out, right? And they are luck yeah. based. So you get rid of all that bad stuff. Yeah. It was nice to get out of the system. It yeah. also wakes them up too. I mean, they're all yeah. kind of cloud nine after the way we were all hyping them up after Auburn. So give them the bye week, get them back down to earth, grind it out, and they're ready to go. Yeah. Uh the record after bye week's not great, but do it. Like, no, no. Apparently, so I'm gonna yeah. trust. Him. Yeah, Manny Diaz. Yeah. Just talk to him. Diaz helps, honestly, being a former head coach too, yep. he can show what his team used to do. So, mm-hmm. no, I, I think that is an added element too that will certainly help. Um, I'm not looking at the bye week as a bad thing anymore, and as it was, and you know, a couple of those times when they came off the bye week, they're also coming off of a loss, and I think the team just mm-hmm. kind of packed it in. That's in some points, I think. Um, you know, after they lost to Ohio State in 2018, they had the bye, and then they played Michigan State, and they came out flat. And did they, did they they didn't have the bye after – no, I think they had the bye bef- – no, they had the bye before they played Ohio State in 2017. And obviously, yeah. you know, they, they lost that game, but I don't think that had anything to do with the bye week because they came out no. red hot. So, you know, you have to look at the not. context. Yeah, you got to look at the context of those games too, obviously, too. they It plays a role in this. That was just JT Barrett being – awesome at the end of the game right i think yeah pretty much yeah all right well gonna log one in here which i knew would happen so uh we should be back with two episodes next week review preview for uh minnesota so that'll be fun uh jane ellie thanks for thanks for stopping in no it took a lot for you to come in here and <laughs> give us your 10 minutes i, I know to tyler thanks for coming on try the drink hey. i will post the drink we'll make sure people see the drink that is that is the number one thing um Nate, Nate's going with with Penn State too. All right, so I'm alone in this, but uh, all right, we will we will see you all next time.